I'm going to talk about uh, aggression and some tips on how to deal with it and later videos, a few videos on case histories of dogs I've seen that were really aggressive. I've never, in all the years I've been doing this, I've never spoken about how to deal with aggressive dogs. Uh, because what I do will get people bitten if you do it wrong. And so there's a good chance, if you follow my advice now, <laughs> you'll get bitten. So I'll give you some tips, and it's up to you, you've been warned. But I, oh, for 15 years, I've just been asked constantly, can you give us some advice about how to deal with an aggressive dog, particularly from you know, some beginner trainers, um, so they can deal with them. And I've always said no. But I've got to a certain age now when I think, oh, bugger it, you've got common sense. <laughs> if, you, if you don't know what, what to do, you don't know what to do wrong. <laughs> so you'll be doing wrong things anyway. <laughs> I'll just give it a go. <laughs> and, so, and it's only a few tri tips because every case is live in the moment and you never know when it's going to go at shit. Uh, and my arms here, I tried to count one day all the scars on my arms and I got to 36 and gave up. So it's over 36, but probably under 45. That's a lot of scars over the years. And they're all from medium size to small dogs. I've got a few bigger scars on my legs from the big dogs, but I'm not, I've still got my arms. So obviously I haven't done the wrong thing with a pit bull. I haven't been that stupid. I'll talk about breeds first. If you want a family dog, you've got to look at the breeds. So if you get a pit bull, don't be surprised if he wants to kill dogs. That's what it's bred for. If you get a protection dog like an Alsatian, Rottweiler, Ridge Cat, and they start protecting, that's what they're bred to do. And they're very dangerous dogs. So my advice is don't have them for a family dog at all. No matter what your friends say, what you see on Facebook, the ones you had before that were soft, you only need the one to go wrong. And your children have only got one face for you to experiment on. And that gets bitten, it's for life. So, I would always go, if I've got a family, a young family, me personally, I think you should go for a small dog. Because if they do get aggressive, like one of the most aggressive dogs there is, is a Jack Russell. But you can pick a Jack Russell up by his scuff of its neck and it's going, Aah! You're not going to lose your leg on it or your arm. You try doing that with a rich back, it's not going to work, is it? So common sense comes into it. And when I teach you what I do, I'm a hands-on trainer. That's why I get bit sometimes, because I touch dogs. And I teach you what methods not touching dogs. Well, I won't teach you. I'm just going to give some tips. I can't teach you. You'd have to come to, you know, a hundred consultations with me to really get the hang of it and take your chances. But if you're going to be a personal dog trainer, you're going to get bit. Unless you're useless. <laughs> and I've got a good ca some good cases to talk about where they've had three personal trainers who haven't even touched the dog. They've been totally useless. So you've got to be able to touch them. And what else did I have there, down there, Marga? To just do an introduction. This is an introduction video of what's going to I'm going to bring you up on the other videos. What, you mean about aggression? Yeah. What did I have wrote, written down? Nervous. Nerves. Oh, yeah, you've got the different kinds. Of, and I'm not like most owners, most trainers say most aggression comes from anxious, nervous dogs. They call them anxious dogs. I call them nervous dogs. They call them anxious because it sounds better, I think. <laughs> no one wants to say their dog's nervous. But uh, I don't disagree with that entirely. I reckon, uh, in my experience, 40% of the dogs I see are aggression, aggressive just because they want to be aggressive, not you've, because they're nervous. You've mentioned nervous. before that aggression is natural. Oh, yeah, th that's the other thing. It's not, don't be frightened to admit your dog's aggressive. 
Don't say, oh, it's not aggressive, it's just a does this, it's a... If it's aggressive, it's aggressive. If it tries to bite, if it's going growling, it, that's aggression. And that's normal. Just about every puppy will growl and bite over food when it's a youngster. Because that's how they get things. And nearly every puppy growing up at some point is going to growl and try and bite. And the, the good ones will just try and bite gently. But you've got to stop that. So it's just normal. They can't have an argument with you any other way. So it's not something to be ashamed of if your dog's aggressive. They all are. So if someone does have a relatively new puppy and it is showing some food aggression, then what's a, what's a couple of tips to start them off? Tell, <laughs> tell them off for it. That's the only way to stop it. There's no good diverting with other food. That's why treat training is never going to work. How can you... Your dog's eating its food and it's growling at your kids because they walk by it. You can't control kids, totally. They've got to walk around the house. And if, I've had dogs, many dogs, they will guard, if you let food aggression go, they will guard where they think their food is. You know, if you're giving them a bone and they take it down the garden and then you take it away, they will guard the bush, some dog, where you took it away from and bite your kids as they walk by. So you've got to deal with it and the only way to deal with it is to tell them off. You can't treat train them dog that's guarding food, oh here's some, here's some better food, over here, over here, and then grab it, I know a lot of people do that, they get born, to it. But that's not going to keep you safe, no dog should ever bite you, you, know, you, you, you get dogs hurt, you've got to control your kids of course, you know, it's, you know, it's no good having wild kids that jump on, you, on your kids, and your dogs, and your dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perhaps I've had too much of this. Or they just perhaps I'm just permanently pissed. Yeah, you've got to control your kids as well as your dog. But if you take a look, oh a little Keely down there, four kilo, she bites your kids, they're gonna have a little puncher mark. If your forty kilo dog bites your kid, your kid's in serious trouble. Uh, I think that would be about wrapping it up. Is there anything more we've got to add to that? To puppy one? aggression, you mean? Yeah. Uh, well, did you finish everything you wanted to say about nervousness and aggression? Oh, no, yeah. The nervous dogs, they can be the most dangerous. Because if you've got a real nervous dog, they snap without thinking. So if you go like that and touch them when they're high, they're around and they're not even thinking. And they know this. As soon as they do it, they go, oh, sorry. But uh, so... You want a nice steady dog, but there's so many nervous dogs around, you have to learn to deal with it and get them to that state where if the kid falls on top of them, they yelp and run rather than yelp and back and bite. Uh, the purely aggressive dogs, the dominant ones, if you can dominate them, they're probably, you know, they often come, come good, those ones, as apart from certain breeds. You know, they've got so much dominance and aggression bred into them, we don't want them around. Well, just, just list again those, those breeds that are naturally dominant and naturally likely to bite if they're under the gun. Right. Rottweilers, Ridgebacks, all the pit dogs, pit bulls and all the bull types, cattle dogs, Jet Russells, <laughs> it's a long list. Oh, Cocker Spaniels, they can be some of the worst. Uh, some of the Labrador's strains nowadays, uh, they're not all soft now, and uh, some of them. Um, French Bulldogs, oh, that comes under the bull category. Dutch Hounds. That's a, the ter that's about it for the terrier group. The, the other terriers can do it, and the, some of the fluffies, but the fluffies are pretty, as soon as you turn them off, they, they normally come good straight away, but Dutchies and Jack Russells might be a bit harder. Now, there's, there's probably a lot more in there, but uh, the best one is absolutely here in Australia, Kehoodoos. Uh, I have not met an aggressive one yet to, to humans. 
and you get lead aggression going crazy, but they're not really aggressive. So they're my number one for if you want a safe dog. But I like I like cattle dogs for robust boys, but you've got to watch them because they like they're territorial. They bite you, the intruders. Which your intruders might be your friends <laughs> in their eyes. <laughs> oh, and chihuahuas. I was going to talk. I've got a case study on it, chihuahua, because they they can be naturally aggressive. They've been in their past. They were, were supposed to bite people in, who were trying to pickpocket your handbag. That's why they're carried around. Uh, can you think of any more? Yeah. No, that's that's about covered it. I think. All right. So the next one, I'll give you a case study of a, a big, big dog type who didn't like any of their friends coming in the house and sat there glaring and growling at them and then he got to a point where he, he leapt at their friends as they tried to leave uh, aggressively and that one come over to me and rested his big huge head between my legs and started growling, so that was fun. <laughs> so I think for now, that little short intro that I do, for, and so it's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from me.